गुड मॉर्निंग एम आई ऑडिबल यस सर यस सर गुड मॉर्निंग सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी ट्रांसफर फंक्शन ऑफ अ we just took a string mass damper system and gave it an impulse input and looked at the impulse response so that is uh, an example which we did for the transfer function so here you can see a block diagram is it visible is a block diagram visible yes sir yes sir yes sir okay so uh, what it has is it's ha it has a reference input and it has a controller k it has an actuator a and then a plant this plant is nothing but the system and then output the feedback is taken uh, to the sensor and then given to the uh, input and there is an uh, disturbance uh, which is uh, created so the plant is nothing but that uh, system which we have uh, talked about and this is a feedback uh, sensor so you can see a negative sign here so this is a, a negative feedback system because uh, you always take the difference right so suppose if you want the vehicle to speed um, vehicle to move at uh, 50 km per hour and it is moving at say 45 km per hour you get to know the difference so we have this minus sign here so it is a negative feedback system so you always take the difference of it and give it to the uh, controller and then you have this uh, actuator you have the disturbance so what is this disturbance it, it may be anything outside uh, external disturbances which you have not planned for suppose a uh, road is uh, the curve is upwards or uh, sloping downwards okay if it's a um, if it is a vehicle if it's a heating system maybe some air blown uh, air starts blowing and reduces the temperature so that could be a disturbance okay so there are many kinds of disturbances that can be uh, created that can get created okay we don't create the disturbances that get created during the operation so to overcome those disturbances we have this uh, feedback system the main purpose of a feedback system is to overcome the disturbances which gets created okay so that is the main intention of having a uh, closed loop feedback control system and this is a negative uh, feedback control now um the first thing i would like to talk about is this uh, plant the whole syllabus is about the controller but for today's class we will be talking about this plant or the system okay so how do we before we control something we need to have a mathematical model of that system that we have discussed and that process is called a system identification so how do you identify a system there are two methods one is a white box method one is a black box method through a white box method what you use is the physics of the uh, system say suppose you have uh, what you have previously done is you have modeled a a mechanical system as this uh, spring and then the mass so this is the displacement x so this is a spring constant uh, k and this has the impulse input u of t so this is what you have done and you can also add a um, damper to this okay so this is c so the equation would be mx double dot of t plus c x dot of t plus plus k x k x of t is equal to this 
u of t that is the impulse input if you write it in a If you write the same thing in S domain, what you get is m s square x of s plus c s x of s plus k x of s is equal to one. So if you take the Laplace transform of this. Now, if you take x of s as common, you get m s square plus c s plus k, which is equal to one. Now, x of s by one actually is equal to one divided by m s square plus c s. Plus k, so this is the output. Output is the displacement. Input is the uh, impulse signal. So output by input is nothing but the transfer function. So you have got this by uh, applying the physics. What um, the physics that you have applied is m x double dot is equal to summation of all forces, which is nothing but the Newton's second law. So this is the white box approach, the transfer function you have got. So this is what you have got in uh, S domain, the Laplace transform. Now, um, say suppose we'll use the black box approach. That is, based on the data, you find out the transfer function instead of the physics of it. So for that, we'll consider an example of a hair dryer. Just a second, I'll share the screen. Okay. So here I have, uh, is it visible? I, yes, sir, we can see some codes written like program. Yeah. Can you see yeah. the system identification toolbox? System identification untitled, can you see? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir. Oh. Yeah. So what you do is there is an example in this uh, MATLAB for the hair dryer. Okay. What we are doing is we are mathematically modeling a hair dryer. Okay. Not based on physics, based on data. Now I take that example and the data name is uh, dryer. Already the data is there. So I'll just import that data. Okay, so what the data is about is, so this is the data. The input is the power and output is the temperature. You know the hair dryer, right? So you give a power input, you get the temperature. So for over a period of time. So you have three things, input, system, and output. Now what you're trying to do, you are identifying the system. Okay, through the black box method, you know, you don't know the physics of a hair dryer. Okay, assume you don't know the physics of a hair dryer. You know that if you give some power, it will give you some temperature. Okay, and you carry out this experiment practically. Okay, you do a practical experiment, you give the power and note down the uh, temperature it gives. Okay, over a period of time. Now, once you have some data, you have the input and the output, you, have, you need to identify what is that system. Okay, so for this, what we do is, once we have this input and the output uh, experimentally, um, which we have got, we have loaded it, we estimate the transfer function model in this. Okay, so you can see some window, you just ignore for this and say estimate. Okay. 
What do you see? Can you see this? Uh, I see a hatched. I see a hatched window kind of thing. Oh, is it okay? Just a second. What do you see now? The TF one, can you see here? Hello. No, sir, where sir? What yeah, is trial? Tri I see the trial one dot m and then below that command window. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, you'll be able to see, I guess. Yes, sir. One. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you click on this, you get a window opened. Can you see the uh, numerator and the denominator equation here from input power to output temperature? Can you see that? I don't see any. No, sir. No, no sir. sir. Only that graph is there. Each time I think I have to share that particular thing. Okay. Each time I have to share it. Fine. So you would be seeing this from input power to output temperature and an equation there. Correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Minus 1.368 yes, s sir, yes, sir. 14.68 divided by s square plus 6.825 s plus 15.02. Okay. Yes. So what this has done is this has created, this has evaluated a mathematical model for the hair dryer. Okay. With 83.74% uh, fit for the uh, estimation. Okay. So why this 83.74%? Why not 100%? Is it because we solve it as LTI and uh... yeah, okay. Mathematically, when you are, when we are modeling, we use LTI systems. Okay, linear time invariant time invariant systems. Okay, so but practically, what it is a hair dryer is a could have some non-linearity. Okay, so you avoid all the non-linearity and model it into a linear time invariant system and when you do that you will not be able to 100% model it exactly as a real system but you will be able to approximate it to some closer value okay and that is the 83.74% now Just a second. Now you can see the measured and simulated model output. So this blue color, what you see is the model. The black color here and there, which you see is the experimental data. Okay. And the fit you see is 83.74%. Okay. So, this is because we have used modeled it as a LTI system and this process, whatever we saw, what, what we did uh, the first step was to conduct an experiment with the hair dryer, give it an input power, note down the temperature. Okay. Though we have not done it practically, uh, assume that you have, uh, you have a hair dryer with you and you varied the power and note down, noted down the temperature. You did this for a number of readings over a period of time. Now, you load the data into the MATLAB, input and the output, power and temperature. And then say, identify that system mathematically. Okay. You identify that system mathematically. Now, why is that required? Because that is required for designing the controller. If you don't have a system itself mathematically, you cannot uh, go for the uh, controller thing. 
okay so you need to have a mathematical model how do you get this mathematical model there are two approaches as discussed white box and the black box this is the black box approach what i have shown you the head layer you don't know what kind of system it is you don't know the physics of it okay so what you just know is the input and the output with that you have identified what is that system so that is what we have done so when we looked at the spring mass damper system we don't need a um, black box approach here we understand the physics okay so uh, using mx double dot is equal to summation of all forces we can get the trans function but if it's a hair dryer then it becomes a uh, problem so if the system is a hair dryer then this is the transfer function okay minus 1.368 s plus 14.68 divided by s square plus 6.825 s plus 15.02 okay this thing you take it out and put it in the in the place of plan or the system okay so what is this plan we are talking about the head dryer right and Head dryer is nothing but mathematically. If you have to describe the head dryer, it is with this. Okay, so minus one point three six eight plus fourteen point six eight divided by s plus six point eight two five s plus fifteen point zero two is nothing but the head dryer mathematically. Okay, so any questions in this? Any doubts? No sir. You have understood both the white box approach and the black box approach. No oh, yes, sir. I think black, so. black box approach you use system identification toolbox in matlab hmm. okay you have to use that you cannot get it with pen and paper okay you have to use system identification toolbox in matlab to identify the system and then uh, see how to control it okay so this whole course is about controller not about the plant or the system plant and system is the same okay there we will not discuss about system or the plant but only for today's class i am discussing about the system the whole course is about controller okay designing the controller but if i don't discuss how to model a system or a plant what happens is you will only see it as a numerical problem okay given a mathematical model design a controller if we start doing that what will happen is you will not be able to understand the physical system significance okay the relation to a physical system so now what you know is you know that the head dryer is nothing but mathematically modeled it into a um, transfer function and then we use that in place of the uh, plant mathematical equation we put and then design the controller okay if you know the physics go for the white box method if you don't know the physics use the system identification toolbox in matlab and um, before using the system identification toolbox what what is the thing you should do before using system identification toolbox what is the thing you should do should import the system surface you should have data okay input and output data like the power is the input temperature is the output experimentally you have to do some uh, you have to give some input measure the output and note it down okay you need to have lot of data once you have lot of data then you can load that in the matlab and then identify the system okay if you don't have input and output data you cannot identify the system clear okay so you need to have the input and the output data to go for the identification of the system so um what will be the now i'll differentiate between disturbance and 
noise okay in control systems there is a difference between disturbance and noise disturbance is actually given to the system okay when when uh, uh, when you are heating a furnace to 1000 degrees centigrade uh, suddenly some air blows to the heating element okay because of external wind so that is a disturbance okay so the noise is nothing but this is the signal picked up by the sensor okay the noise is always associated with the sensor the signal it picks the noise signals which gets picked up by the sensor that is nothing but noise disturbance is always to the physical system noise is always taken up by the sensor so what happens if noise is taken up by the sensor it doesn't give the proper feedback okay so here in our uh, course what we'll assume is uh, for uh, simplicity we'll assume the transfer function of the sensor is 1 okay transfer function of sensor is 1 what do i mean by that output by input what did i tell you about transfer function it is nothing but the output by output by input yes input okay so what is output output is nothing but this one this is the output okay what is the input to the sensor this one okay now if noise is zero if i don't consider noise or i assume the noise to be zero then whatever the output from the sensor is equal to the input to the sensor okay so the transfer function of the sensor will be equal to 1 okay so this is called as unity feedback system okay this is called as unity feedback that is we assume that there is no uh, noise uh, picked up by the sensor whatever sensor is giving as an output is actually the signal that is taken from the output of this okay so we don't consider noise just to uh, keep it uh, simpler okay so not to complicate the problem so to keep it simple we say noise is zero in the sensor sensor is working fine it doesn't pick any noise and it just takes the output signal and um, gives it to you okay so output by input is one so transfer function of sensor is one so this has a transfer function we have modeled it and we also assume the actuator is working well uh, there is no uh, problem with the actuator so uh, this can also be taken as one now we have this input disturbance and the output so we have to overcome this disturbance okay we need to have the desired output and it has to achieve that even in spite of the dis even in spite of this disturbance okay even if there is a disturbance it should overcome that the system should overcome that disturbance and that is what we are looking for in a closed loop system okay any doubts so far any doubts no sir no sir no sir okay now i am going to define a term called as stability i'll tell you the importance of this a little later but i'll define what is uh, stability stability means for a bounded input to a system for a bounded input to a system we have we get bounded output bounded output okay what do you mean by this if the input is finite then output is also finite okay so the output is not going to vary very largely for a small input for a finite input that is the meaning of this okay so for a bounded input to the system we get bounded output so if that if this condition is satisfied the system is said to be stable okay the system is said to be stable 
clear any doubt in this definition for a bounded input or a finite input you get finite output okay suppose if you have a uh, you give a bounded input to a system and you get unbounded output that is uh, the output goes to some infinity then the system becomes unstable okay so infinity or very very large okay so that is called as unstable system now let's see an uh, example of that I'll open this linear system analyzer. I go to the plot configurations. I said impulse response. I want to give an impulse input and look at its response. Now I define the, it is the same transfer function, S is equal to one divided by MS square plus CS plus K. Okay. I'll run this and then refresh the system. Okay. So what do you mean by stability? Can you see this impulse response window? Linear yes, system. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. What do you mean by stability? Stability, I said, if you get a bounded output for a bounded input, the system is stable. Okay. So what is the bounded input that we are giving? We are giving an impulse signal. Okay. So it goes from zero. Okay. This is the response of this, this is the output. Now it, after some time it comes to zero. Okay. This amplitude comes to zero after say 12 seconds. Okay. So it comes back to zero. Now this is bounded output. Okay. We have given some input and the, after some time it comes back to zero. So what do you mean by impulse input? What do you mean by impulse input? It is. It is one instant uh, input. Yeah, like signal. High value. High value. High value at uh, t equal to zero. zero okay. yeah. So you are giving it a, uh, giving a signal. That is nothing but something like initial disturbance to determine the natural frequency of a system. Okay, something like that. Okay, you're giving an initial disturbance, not an uh, externally applied load continuously. Okay, so when that happens, when you give an initial disturbance, so the output has to come to zero over a period of, after a period of time. So that means the system is stable. Okay, so if I uh, change this, say uh, three, okay then refresh this okay um suppose say 0 0.5 i'm just varying the parameters and then trying to plot this. see this this is a underdam system so you can see with the impulse signal the response is coming to zero after some uh, what how many seconds 40 seconds say okay after 40 seconds you are getting a bounded uh, output okay this is it, it is coming back to zero so for a bounded input you have a bounded output so the system is stable now i'll give this as minus 0.5 okay c equal to minus 0.5 and run this and then refresh this what is happening here the system is it stable now So no, sir, because at the end it is uh, peaking again, no? Yeah. So the output is unbounded. Okay.
so you can you see the output is growing yes okay. sir for a bounded input you have a unbounded output okay so this is a unstable system this is a unstable system now i put um minus 6 or something can you see this this is going up okay yeah. for a uh, impulse input the output is not coming back to zero it is going somewhere okay so it is exponentially somewhere increasing over a period of time okay so this is these are examples of unstable systems okay for a bounded input you have unbounded output so this is an example of a unstable system suppose if i put a plus here instead of minus and then run this and then refresh it is this stable or unstable i think it is stable sir because uh, the output uh, you know it stays it's like coming zero. back to zero okay yeah. so it is stable now i will give you an example of marginally stable i put c is equal to 0 c is equal to 0 means what damping ratio is 0 okay so damping ratio is 0 it's a un it's a undamped system now i refresh this now what do you call the system is stable unstable it is marginally stable okay meaning for a given bounded input the output is not totally unbounded but also it is not coming to zero it is keep on fluctuating over a small range okay so this is called as marginally stable system okay so we have discussed three things stable unstable marginally stable any any doubt in these three no sir no sir you have understood yes sir yes sir okay. Yeah. okay so this is very important and we'll uh, discuss uh, on this a little more in the uh, next uh, classes okay so uh, today we discussed what is system identification i showed you uh, how to identify a system mathematically using a black box method we did the white box method using the physics of the system uh, in the previous class we did a system identification using black box today and uh, we know how to mathematically model a system now now we will focus on controlling part okay now we know from where that system is coming from okay the relation between that mathematical model and the real system now uh once we know how to identify the system we can focus on the controller and that is what we will uh, focus on so before uh, we look at different uh, techniques these are some terms stability of the system we need to know okay so these are uh, you should clearly be able to identify whether the system is stable or unstable or marginally stable what i am showing you is in time domain or uh, s domain i think times yeah. time domain sir x axis is time okay time time domain i have not started discussing s domain yet i am just showing you stable unstable and marginally stable in a time domain systems okay when we go to s domain you should still be able to identify whether it is stable or unstable or marginally stable that we will discuss in the next class thank you bye thank you sir